the Assassin's Creed games have always seemed like a good fit for Switch. These open-world action-adventure games are full of small tasks and missions suitable for short play sessions. Plus, early installments have technical roots on the 7th generation of consoles, which the Switch has proven more than capable of matching. So it feels appropriate that Assassin's Creed, the Ezio Collection, has finally arrived on Nintendo's hybrid console. It's a bundle containing Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations, essentially the first proper Assassin's Creed games after the rather limited first installment. The Ezio Collection originally shipped on PS4 and Xbox One in 2016, offering higher resolutions and improved visuals relative to the 7th gen console versions. How has this collection been translated to the Switch? It's a curious question as some later Assassin's Creed titles, Assassin's Creed 3, Black Flag, and Rogue, arrived on Switch with a variety of settings enhancements relative to their 360 and PS3 iterations, alongside more stable frame rates. However, low quality, overly compressed audio marred these conversions, and the port of Assassin's Creed 3 was beset by glitches. Has Ubisoft learned from these mistakes, or are these early Assassin's Creed games better enjoyed elsewhere? First, a recap. Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations were released from 2009 to 2011 on Xbox 360, PC, and PS3. These games are a fun throwback to an earlier era of Assassin's Creed and are more direct and focused than recent series entries. There's a clear visual progression between the three games. Assassin's Creed 2 is a reasonable enough looking mid-generation effort, but with clear flaws. Facial modeling and animation is awkward, and environmental detail is limited, with flat and plain looking buildings. Brotherhood shows some modern improvements, particularly in character faces, but is otherwise quite similar. Revelations, on the other hand, is a mature-looking, late-generation PS3 360 game, with much more realistic lighting and geometry-rich environments. The city of Constantinople is bathed in smoke, fog, and haze, and has great weather effects, including a reasonable approximation of cloud shadows. Character rendering took another big step here, with a particularly realistic portrayal of skin for the time. It was a technical gem, only let down by poor performance on consoles, although the two prior games weren't very stable either. So how do these games fare on Switch? Let's start with Assassin's Creed 2, which is a complicated and rather compromised conversion. Assassin's Creed 2 originally had a stylized but somewhat unrealistic look to scene lighting that was stripped out of the 2016 release of the Ezio Collection, running here on Xbox One S. The intro cutscene shows off these changes well. The color tone here has been normalized, skin tones are more realistic, and lighting appears flatter, with fewer highlights, paired back bloom, and less depth. In this scene, the sepia-toned color correction in the original game is gone, and the image lacks visual cohesion as a result. The scene lighting has been dramatically flattened, with less contrast and brighter shadowed regions. Some of the self-shadowing in Ezio is also lost here, and the original game's depth fog effect has also been cut out of the presentation. On the plus side, ambient occlusion is now present, which was missing in the 360 release, and texture resolution has been increased. The aesthetic changes here are stark, and I have to say that I prefer the original presentation on the whole. The Nintendo Switch release inherits all of these aesthetic changes, but with some cuts. The depth of field effect is mostly gone. Ambient occlusion is cut as well, shadow resolution and shadow draw distance have been decreased. Character lighting has been simplified in some cutscenes as well, with missing lighting in this scene, for instance. It's not too far from the 2016 last-gen version of the Ezio Collection, but with some unfortunate settings reductions that further remove it from the original aesthetic. Thankfully, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood was left more or less untouched in the original Ezio Collection, outside of improvements to ambient occlusion and texture resolution. The settings adjustments on Switch are familiar, shadow quality and draw distance have been reduced, and ambient occlusion and depth of field are cut out entirely, but don't sting quite as much here, as the overall aesthetic has been more or less preserved from the original release. Revelations is a little bit more interesting. The original Ezio collection is largely a match for the 360 version here, outside of some boosts to texture resolution, and the same Switch cuts are present for this title as well. But there is one further cut on Switch, and it's a big one. Some of the atmospherics, like the bandwidth heavy dust effects, are gone, giving the game a simpler and less weathered appearance. 
The Switch version looks clearer, brighter, and less sophisticated in some scenes. There are also some distracting shadow filtering artifacts in certain cutscenes on Switch, which are most noticeable on character self shadows. Outside of Assassin's Creed 2, which doesn't translate particularly well in any version of the Ezio collection, the Switch releases hold up alright for the most part. Still, the removal of depth of field, ambient occlusion, and other visual effects makes these Switch releases look rather clinical at times, sometimes comparing unfavorably to the Xbox 360 versions. In some key areas, visual settings are worse than the original versions, which are now all over 10 years old. But what about image quality? In docked mode, we're getting a dynamic 1080p, which can drop down about as low as 936p under load. Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood very rarely deviate from 1080p, but Revelations does tend to cut resolution in some shots, particularly in long views of the city. 1080p is achieved the vast majority of the time here though, and the image looks sharp and detailed for a Switch title. Revelation shores up the presentation with a post-process anti-aliasing technique, while Assassin's Creed's 2 and Brotherhood operate without AA of any kind. This is a little odd, as the 2016 Ezio collection used a post-process AA for all titles, and the original releases of Brotherhood and Assassin's Creed 2 used 2 times multi-sample anti-aliasing on Xbox 360. Portable mode employs a similar setup, although the results are a bit more variable. The resolution target is cut to 720p, with lows around 540p. Resolution takes the dive a little bit more often here, particularly in Revelations and Brotherhood. City shots are the biggest offenders in Revelations, while crowd scenes and cinematics tend to reduce resolution in the prior titles. This is complicated slightly by Ubisoft's approach to image scaling. When Ezio Collection drops resolution, it scales the image back up to the output resolution without using linear filtering, and instead appears to be using nearest neighbor filtering. This tends to exaggerate the appearance of resolution drops by introducing uneven scaling artifacts, although image sharpness is better preserved. This applies to both portable and docked modes. When these games are operating at native 720p in portable mode though, these titles look great on the internal Switch display. Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood stand out in particular, and look super sharp and crisp owing to their lack of anti-aliasing. Performance is mostly positive. Dock mode operates at a solid 30 FPS across all titles, with dips only in rare circumstances. Character close-ups in a few cutscenes in Assassin's Creed 2 pull frame rates briefly into the high 20s, and walking around in Constantinople in Revelations can see similar dips on occasion. Many of the dips are momentary and seem to be caused by a bit of lag in the dynamic resolution system. Once resolution stabilizes, frame rates usually recover to 30 FPS. The portable mode fares somewhat worse. The same spots that cause performance issues in docked play still drop frames here, and some action heavy scenes also seem to cause problems. Revelations is the worst offender here, though all of the games exhibit these issues to one degree or another. Portable play is still far more stable than the shaky 30 FPS of the original games on 360, but it isn't quite delivering the same degree of consistency as the docked version. Unfortunately, there is one final oddity here, and that's the audio mix. Both the original game and the Ezio collection had a fairly cinematic audio mix, with loud music and explosions, and comparatively quiet dialogue, with a mix that carried all of these elements with a fairly wide dynamic range. Some of the detail seems to have been lost here, and the dialogue is much louder in the mix in some scenes. I left Rome a 12 months ago looking for inspiration. And that search brought me here. I left Rome 12 months ago looking for inspiration. And that search brought me here. Insieme per la vittoria! Insieme! Insieme per la vittoria! The audio compression issues present in the other Assassin's Creed games on Switch seem to have made a return here. Many scenes still sound fine, but others sound noticeably degraded. The Switch port of the Ezio collection is a mixed bag. There are a range of graphical changes and cutbacks here, some part of the original Ezio collection release, but most unique to the Switch versions. The Switch is stripped of post-process effects like depth of field and SSAO, alongside the removal of anti-aliasing in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood, and cuts to the atmospheric alpha effects in Revelations. 
Assassin's Creed 2 in particular has been dramatically changed from the original release, with the Ezio Collection version showcasing drastic differences from the 360 version. Performance and image quality are mostly good here. Outside of some occasional hiccups with dynamic res, the Switch release maintains a consistent 30fps and hits its resolution targets, though the portable mode is somewhat more noticeably unstable. For those looking to enjoy Assassin's Creed on the go, this collection should do the trick, but the Ezio collection falls short of earlier Assassin's Creed Switch ports. These aren't bad versions by any means, but they could have been better. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. To view a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. That's all for me for now. Thanks for watching.